Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, May 26, 2023. We need a pro-growth, pro-opportunity, and pro-taxpayer tax code. That's the title of remarks made by U.S. Senator John Thune, Republican of South Dakota, ranking member of the Subcommittee on Taxation and IRS Oversight. Here are some of his statements. Taxes, of course, have a huge impact on our economy and our capacity for prosperity. The more individuals and businesses have to pay to the government in taxes, the less money they have to save, spend, and grow. And you'd think that everyone would be able to agree that our tax system should promote both individual prosperity and economic growth. But the Democrats regard tax policy not as a way to help secure economic prosperity, but as a way to collect that money so they can follow through on their plans for new and ever-expanding government programs. Republicans' primary interest when it comes to tax policy is not about how to bring in more money for the federal government. It's about how to help the economy grow and expand prosperity for all. We believe that tax policy should be pro-growth, pro-opportunity, and pro-taxpayer. Now, After the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, incomes grew, unemployment fell to a 50-year low, the poverty rate fell to the lowest level ever recorded, Business investment increased. Black Americans and Hispanic Americans both saw record low rates of poverty and record high increases in income. The income gap narrowed. And contrary to what some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle would have you believe, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act also helped increase revenues to the federal government. In short, tax reform helped create an economic environment for American businesses and American taxpayers to prosper, with some of the biggest benefits going to lower- and middle-income Americans. We don't need a pro-government tax code. We need a pro-growth, pro-opportunity, pro-taxpayer tax code. Now, is Senator Thune actually proposing the fair tax? (laughs) Senator Thune, fair tax supporters who read your remarks may think that you're stating your support for the fair tax. The fair tax is superior to the income tax in addressing every one of the points you made. Now, economists agree that if you really want to see increased economic growth in the U.S., eliminate the income payroll tax and replace it with a consumption tax. If you really want to see Americans be more competitive in the global market, then pass the fair tax. Our present income payroll tax system subsidizes imports and puts American manufacturers at a price disadvantage versus their foreign competitors. The fair tax completely levels that playing field. Now, surely you're not a fan of hiring an army of new IRS agents that will harass and pursue middle-class taxpayers and small businesses. That approach won't even put a dent in the rapidly growing income payroll tax evasion. But by its very nature, the fair tax will reduce evasion substantially because 90% of new retail goods are sold by less than 10% of the retailers. In conclusion... By describing the benefits of a sane federal tax system, Senator Thune is making a strong case for the fair tax. He's issuing this proclamation because he knows the income payroll tax system. He knows how complicated, unstable, and unfair the income tax really is. He understands the damage it does to the American economy. He knows that an ever-changing tax code makes it impossible for businesses and individuals to plan ahead. He knows that a provision in the federal income tax code is not like a contract that can be relied on for the future. Nope, it can be changed at any time. All the companies that committed funds to research and development projects when the federal income tax code allowed a 100% deduction in the year it was spent learned that lesson the hard way. Congress changed that law to only allow R&D expenses to be amortized over five years, 20% a year. Now, this means that if a small business owner spent $100,000 on research and development in 2022, he or she can only deduct $20,000 from their income and will have to pay federal income tax on the remaining $80,000. The clear lesson is that lobbyists for the R&D industry didn't do a good enough job, meaning they didn't contribute enough money to Congress. Now, of course, this tax change primarily harms the smaller companies who operate as entities where the income or loss is paid directly by the owners. 
Now, Senator Thune is part of the Republican leadership in the U.S. Senate. Now, unfortunately, while many in D.C. routinely attack the tax policy coming from the other side of the aisle, no one from either side is seriously questioning the need to retain the income payroll tax system. Both sides are united in their desire to keep the income payroll tax system in place because both sides relish the power and control it gives them when they're in the majority and get to write the rules. And, of course, both sides fill their campaign war chest by selling favorable tax treatment to special interests. Now, when someone attacks the fair tax, ask them about some of the above issues with the income payroll tax system. Ask them to explain why a system with all these problems should not be changed. Now, isn't it time to end this ludicrous tax collection system and the IRS along with it? When the fair tax is enacted, there will be no need to fear being audited by the IRS because there will be no more IRS. Under the fair tax, there will be no more tax returns. We'll pay our taxes when we make retail purchases of new goods and services. Now, there's going to be a vote on the fair tax in the House of Representatives. Speaker McCarthy and the other elites didn't want it, but it was forced on them. So, we now have the opportunity to force all members of the House to show where they stand. They can vote for the present income payroll tax system, or they can vote for the fair tax. They can support the corrupt income tax in the IRS, or vote to eliminate it. It can't be any simpler than that. They can hide the true cost of government, or they can pass the fair tax and show everyone the true cost of government on every retail receipt. And finally, they can support the largest transfer of power from the government to the people, the fair tax, or they can vote against it. Now, if members think the fair tax needs to be changed, they can propose that change. Don't let them get away with rejecting the entire bill because it has a flaw that can be easily addressed. Please stand with us and demand that your representatives support a much fairer, much simpler, and much more efficient way to fund the government, the fair tax. The fair tax doesn't pick winners and losers. Because it taxes spending, not earnings, the fair tax lets everyone save for their retirement tax-free. The fair tax collects the revenue the federal government needs to operate, but does it in a way that has the least adverse impact on our individual freedom and the least impact on our economic prosperity. With the fair tax, there are no tax returns to file, no records to keep. We'll pay our federal taxes when we make retail purchases of new goods and services. And with a fair tax, there's no need for the IRS. If you sell a used couch or a used jet ski online, there's no fair tax due on that transaction. The fair tax will allow us to take back control. The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We can't repair it, but we can replace it with the fair tax. Join us and take back control of our country and our lives. Not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really want to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and enact the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. Help us bring about real tax reform and stop future IRS abuses. By contributing or actually investing $10.40 a month, you help provide a financial base to Americans for fair taxation. Now, if you can make larger contributions or investments, these will be used not for salaries, as we're all volunteers, but for the needed updates to our economic studies, which will be vital for all future years. Please go to fairtax.org and invest in AFFT. It's an investment in your and your family's future. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 